What's up guys, Mike the Cody here. Today we're going to go over ambiguous permutations. This is permute to ambiguous permutations. Okay, a permutation is just an ordering of the numbers from 1 to n. So like here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but when n is equal to 5, a permutation might look like 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. And it's basically just an ordering of the numbers from 1 to 5 of n, okay? Alright, now, now this is the difference. Now the inverse permutation, right, is now you inverse it. Basically, the ith element now becomes the position of the ith integer in the permutation. So in this case, we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. Now we have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. And why is this the case? Well, I'll show you guys why is this, this the case. So let's go sketch a book. Okay. Excuse me. Ah. I just burped really hard. All right. 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. Right? This is a, this is a thing. Now. Now the ith number is now the ith position. So when we change this, let's look at this. We have, um, let's, let's pretend the index is, we're indexing it from one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> now, number, the ith number has now become the uh, ith, uh, ith position, right? So here in this case, we have two, three, four, five, one. So now one, one's position oh no two's position is going to be one now so in our new array the second position is going to be one okay all right here now we have uh three so now in the in our new array the third position is going to be two so this is one two three three the third position is going to be two okay now um four the fourth position is going to be three so one two three four all right the fourth position here it's going to be three so we put that three five all right so now um five what is five fifth position is going to have the number four so in one two three four five here's the fifth position it's going to have number four now here what is this value all right uh one now the first position is going to have the number five so now we're going to have the first position is going to have number five so now our new array inverse is now going to equal to five one two three four Five one two three four, all right, and that's where this comes in. Five one two three four. See, see that's the inverse permutation. So now I showed you guys how to get the inverse permutation. So now an ambiguous permutation is that the inverse is exactly the same thing as the original permutation. So here two one four three two is ambiguous because the inverse is the exact same thing. So now all we have to do is write a program that detects if a given permutation is ambiguous or not. So what does that mean? That means that our ambiguous permutation, it means that if we do the inverse, it's going to equal exactly as our original number, our original array permutation. So that's basically what we have to do, right? So we read a number of test cases, we read an array, and we're just going to get the inverse of the array, and then we check if it's equal or not. So that's all you have to do. Uh, okay, so how do you get the inverse of the array? It's pretty simple, actually. I already sh showed you guys how to do it, so I'll just tell you guys the code. It's not hard at all, right? All right, so let's go, let's go down here, and I'll show you guys the code right here. Okay, so, all right, uh, before we do anything, we got to read the number of n. n is the number of uh, numbers in our array, okay? That's what we have to do. We have to read an n. Um, they said to close the program when n is equal to zero because I don't know why. But basically, end the program if n is equal to zero. So what I did here is I had to do a do while loop. n is not equal to zero. Um, that's just because like when n does equal to zero, that happens. But you could do a while loop. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, I read an n. Then I do. Um, then I check if n is equal to zero. Then I break. So that ends the program, and then it'll just return zero because it ends. It, it breaks out this loop. Okay. So then how do I do this? Well, I have an array called R. And I create it as a vector, and I just have the values of, it's going to have the size of n, okay? Then I have r2 that's equal to vector, and it also has size of n. r2 represents the inverse. That's what it represents, the inverse array. Remember, we have to set our inverse array, and then we have to create our original array, okay? So how do I, how do I read this? Well, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in every single value in the uh, first array, r. Right, I got to read in my original value of my first array. Now I need to set the inverse. Now how do I do that? Okay, so because remember um, we are indexing by one, right? 
originally we're uh, in, in the problem statement, we're indexing by one. But our code, remember, arrays are indexed by zero, though. So what do we, what does that do? Basically, if the ith position is now the ith element, or the ith number is the ith position, right? Um, here, what you have to do is you have to subtract one from what you just read, from the original number, original array that you just read. And that'll be your position value. And now once you have your position value of your inverse array, you just set that R2, which is our inverse array, at that position value of uh, Ri minus one is gonna equal to I plus one. Okay, that's gonna equal to I plus one. I plus one represents the new value that of the new index that we have. Remember, because we're indexing from zero, from, we gotta do e, so set it I plus one. Right, because um, that actually represents it. Otherwise, it will set the value to be, um, we go back to the sketchbook. Otherwise, it will set the value to be equal to four, zero, one, two, three, which is not what we want. That's not what we want, okay? So yeah, that's why we have to do it for um, I plus one, okay? So that's our, I remember I is our current index, so that's why we do that. All right, now, now once we have our original array and we have our inverse array, we need to check if they're equal to the other. So to do that, I just do R is equal equal to R2. This actually in C++, this actually does check if these elements are equal. So yeah, you don't have to do much else. I know in Java, you have to like write your own equals function, yada, yada, yada. But in C++, you don't have to. So that's a good part about it. I could just use equals equals. So yeah, I just do R is equal equal. If R is equal equal to R2, is R equal equal to the R inverse? And if it is, then I just print out ambiguous because that means that it's ambiguous, right? That means our inverse is equal to the original array. So that's why we have ambiguous. Otherwise, I print out not ambiguous, okay? So that's pretty much the gist of this. At the end, um, it would be just while, while n is not equal to zero. But yeah, at the end, you just return zero. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of this code. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.